One fresh thing that is quite different, I guess, is just the way Supercell works. We tell our culture, but people can't really know if it's true or not, because more or less all the companies have some kind of big plan that they want to present, and they all more or less sound the same. It's been really hard to say that we actually are like this. I actually applied here because I saw them to do a massive complex game in a very short time period. And I, I was actually like really, really humbled to see how, what they could do in such a way. I had heard of Clash of Clans. I started doing some research and got to understand the culture a bit better. The company defined the values of how the games are being made here. And the idea is to facilitate the game developers to do the best games they can. I applied to find out if it is true and it's, it's been very good. For me, the main difference is coming into a studio where many people actually come from different backgrounds. Usually we have only generalist artists, so we're not specifically doing any one thing. We can all contribute to how we desire the game. So there is no, like, from top down saying that you need to go there. You basically have the decision of yourself. Since the teams are very small, in terms of understanding the game heading towards a particular direction, Everybody more or less knows that direction because they work very close to each other. Small meaning usually is starting from kind of scratch to a game. It might be one, two or three people. So it just kind of slowly increases, but it usually stops between 10 and 15 people. One aspect of the company that is quite different from others is that often individuals can make decisions. It would be even possible that somebody joins the company and does the dream game that he's been dreaming of forever. Anyone can do a game here. In previous companies, maybe everybody can pitch in, but it's more like, okay, that's the creative director, here's the pitch, they run with it and the games change. Here, if you're a programmer, you're an artist, you have an idea, you find a team, and you start the team, you start the project. But there's a lot of ideas floating in the office, a lot of people just testing things out. Sometimes you just say, we would love to borrow this guy for one day a week. Can he help me code a bit of this? And you talk to that team and they say, yeah, well, we have some time. It starts with that and then maybe they go, okay, well now we can actually have someone on board full time. And of course, most of them might not ever be anything, but some of them actually become big games that are hugely successful. Flash Roll is actually created by a server engineer and it's something that he always wanted to do and he had the possibility to do it. There hasn't been a single game like this before, so we created something completely new. When Clash was done, there was, of course, other companies interested how did we actually manage to do the game. I heard the story where there was a room full of people with like black suits and very really serious at it, asking like, how did we do the game? And it, we said like, it's like, this is how we made it. And they just didn't believe it. We don't overly theorize what could work. We usually just go for it and do it and see if it works or not. I think once the game is released, you soon realize that a game is not a game until it's played by people. You could almost consider if you're an artist that you do a drawing might work really well the first time, but not might work first times. But with games, it's even more harder because you can't define what is fun, for example, so you have to try what is fun. Sometimes there might be companies where a programmer comes to tell you that something doesn't look right. And an artist might feel like, hey, I'm the artist here, right? But the thing is, they are not commenting necessarily about your art. They're commenting about the game. And everybody knows game, even if they don't know how to do server engineering. There was one game that they released in Facebook. That was the first game they ever did here. It was not successful enough. And there was some idea of, of Facebook maybe not being the future platform for games. And there was a shift to mobile. The freedom is, is, is insanely a big deal here. The independence is, is true to the teams. And that also helps when you have to kill a game, for example. And usually when that happens in other companies, the story can be very different in there than here because the killing the game is the decision of the team and no one else. However much as you love your design or you think there is some kind of point of interest, maybe fundamentally there is something wrong there. And when you have creative people who have fresh ideas, why not try something else? Whenever we kill a game, we want to have somebody presenting the reason why it failed, so everybody can learn. We have a slogan that 
the best teams make the best games. I find it used it, to be the best people mm -hmm. make the best games. Yeah, now it's we, the best teams. Yeah, yeah. There was one, one game that I worked with and there was the best talents in the team, but the, the chemistry just didn't match exactly, even though they were the best guys. After that, we decided that it's actually the best teams that make the best games. It's almost like a little indie project or a little company you own that you have to make work in a way. There's very rarely you get to experience that, so it's hard for people to believe even. A company that has super good talent and just wants to do good games and give you freedom to do it, it's like a dream come true.